Hey everyone, Angus here with Iron Bow Fly Shop. So I've been hearing more and more about saltwater trips. Um, with everything kind of opening back up again, travel starting up, I think a lot of people are eager to get back into the flats and fish for stuff you can't normally fish for around these parts. Um, so today we're going to be tying a foxy gotcha. Uh, this is a size 6 tied on a Daiichi 2546. And I'm going to be using a uni thread in 6 aught in pink. And we're going to start our thread just behind the eye here. Trim off our excess. And we're going to wrap this to about the point of the hook here. And we're going to stop that about a quarter of an inch from the eye of that hook here uh, to tie in our bead chain eyes. Uh, these are hairline product um, in a size medium in stainless steel. I like to leave a fair bit of room just so when you tie everything in, you're not crowding that eye. Making sure they're nice and straight here. We'll come in the figure eight wraps. Making sure those eyes aren't going to go anywhere on me. And for more durability purposes here, I'm going to come in actually and just put a couple drops of Loon's uh, water-based head cement. Um, I can't say enough good things about this stuff. Um, not only does it hold product very well, um, but it's also a non-toxic option as well. Um, Compared to super glue, I would say uh, it's a little healthier for us and the fish as well, uh, just in case that fly does pop off on you. Um, if you want to use Zappy Gap or similar product, by all means. Um, we're going to be tying in our tail here and this is also a hairline product. This is just a flat diamond braid in pearl. Um, if those ends are frayed, do not worry. That's actually what we want to use. Um, so I would like to do about a shank length. And we're just gonna wrap that actually forward here trim off your excess and for our body we're also going to be using the same flat diamond braid in pearl. I like to stop here about the hook point. And for this guy I like to usually stick it right behind those bead chain eyes. That way we're also wrapping over everything we've just tied in. We're going to wrap that exactly to where we've just tied in our tail. And as I work my way forward towards the eyes, I'm gonna make sure everything is pretty uniform so that when I wrap that, I get a nice even body on there. So we can start wrapping that. If you have a rotary function on your vise, by all means, 
feel free to utilize that. I just find it's easier sometimes to wrap it by hand. Come in here, get two nice tight wraps on top, and a few wraps just in front there. Lock everything in, trim off the excess. Now what I'm gonna do here, so I'm going to use a UV clear uh, fly finish from Loon in the flow. I find it gets between everything, at least for this body. I'm not trying to build it up too much. Uh, come in with a brush, just make sure you coat everything. And then we're going to come in with our UV light here just to cure everything. You can also use the thin. I found the thick is a little too much. Um, that being said, some people might find the flow is too thin, but that is totally personal preference. As long as you're getting something on there to kind of hold everything in place, that should do the trick. Next, we're going to be tying in our crystal flash. Uh, this is also in a pearl. Um, another hairline product here. Um, again, I like to use about four pieces. Uh, I find it doesn't bulk everything up. Too much flash sometimes is too much and the nice thing about flash is you can always cut it out. Yeah, so I'm just going to double this over here, make sure all my pieces here are aligned. I'm going to double those over across the thread here just behind our bead chain eyes, or in front, sorry. I'm going to trim that to a, about a quarter inch past the bend of that hook there. A couple more wraps over top. Then we're going to be tying in our crazy legs. Uh, these are in a pearl and fluorescent orange tip. Probably one of my favorite um, silicone legs. Uh, not only is it good for saltwater patterns, uh, but also one of my favorites for steelhead patterns. Uh, double those over again, wrap over top. Durability I find is key. I'm just going to splay those and their appropriate direction here. Don't want legs flying all over the place. And lastly here, we're going to be tying in our fox wing. We're going to use a fair size clump here. Um, if it looks a little big, that's okay. Because what I like to do here is all of those long fibers, I'm just going to lightly pluck out. So we get a nice uniform wing. You can tie these in a variety of different colors, whether it's white, like we're tying here today, tan, pink, chartreuse. That is entirely up to you and the fish. So again, about the length of that crystal flash, we don't want it too long. Just kind of want it past that hook bend here. Get 
couple nice tight wraps nice and close to those bead chain eyes so when we trim everything we can still maintain a proportionate head here So we're going to come over top of those cutoffs here. And just start building up that head. Covering up all those cutoffs. And now we are ready to whip finish here. Um, in my past videos, I believe I've explained my reasoning for doing two whip finishes. Um, if one breaks on you, you always have a backup. And especially with these flies, where you're actually building a head with basically just thread, it does not affect it whatsoever trim off our excess here and we've still got just a couple steps left in this guy uh, you like to come in again with the UV and just make a small coating on that head here making sure we get all the spots and we're going to come in with our light again. And lastly, we're just going to trim those legs. And I'm going to make them just a shy bit longer than that tail. You want those things to swim when you're stripping that fly at a little action. So I like to go about half inch longer than that tail, or the wing, sorry. So come in, trim those. And there you have it. That is the Foxy Gotcha.